Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Sorry my room's a little dark. Um, I'm actually using my other lamp uh, on the back. I, I usually use two lamps so it makes the entire uh, video a lot brighter than ever. Unfortunately, uh, the light bulb died on my other lamp. Yeah, it's the one that I use um, for the table. So what can you do? <laughs> Um, I'm also wearing my brand new Rockwell's Modern Life t-shirt that I got at Burlington as a Christmas gift. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of cool t-shirts, as I mentioned. But it's a very nice shirt to wear. Yeah, especially for its 25th anniversary since the show aired. Yeah, I love Rockwell's Modern Life. I watched this on Nickelodeon, along with all the other Nicktoons like Rugrats, Ren Stippy, you know, Doug, and all the rest. <laughs> That was really awesome. I also have it on Blu-ray too, the complete series. And it's the Shop Factory release, not the Paramount release that came out just recently. That has a poster included. It did originally have a poster, but it's only on the first line of releases before they have to release it the way it was. So, whatever. It's too bad that they only had three episodes that were edited. So, I was hoping the new Paramount release will offer uncut ones, but they didn't, and they also dropped one extra too, so hope you do. Well, anyway, I'm about to review a movie that came out on February 15, 1985, which is considered to be a high school classic, a crescentio 80s film by writer and director John Hughes, yes, and I just picked this up recently at Kmart, which is now going out of business, can't believe it, and especially in my location. Yeah, I have a Kmart in Burbank, California, which used to be an old store called Zodi's, but it eventually became Kmart later on, and well, there you have it. But now uh, that location's going uh, out of business, it's going to be closed. I think it's going to become some other department store or whatever. Or, okay. Well, it's the movie called The Breakfast Club, right there, that features the Brat Pack themselves. That's right. Yeah, Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson, Anthony Michael Hall, Marley Rainwall, and Ali Sheedy. All right there. This is the 30th anniversary edition that came out on 2015. Uh, which actually has the same features as the previous Blu-ray, the 25th Anniversary Edition. But they added uh, a brand new 4K remastered transfer from its 35mm film elements. So it makes the film look even better than ever. Because I never did on the previous Blu-ray. And it also added a trivia track to go with it. So it makes the release even better. However... There is a Criterion collection that came out last year that has all the features, including deleted and extended scenes, another 4K remaster as shown, that's basically the same I believe, but it has everything, and they only ported just uh, the commentary, uh, the two featurettes that they got, the uh, doc a 12 part documentary that features um, Diablo Cody, the writer of Juno, uh, director Michael Lehman, who did Headers, and it even has um, a few of the cast members from the movie, you know, Anthony Michael Hall, Judd Nelson, and Ali Sheedy, but no interviews with Molly Rainbrawl nor Emilio Estevez. Um, it even has a costume designer joining in and some other people and you know, just discussing about the movie that became so popular over the years. They the essentials of uh, of teenage uh, problems that they're having at high school. I mean this the whole film is basically this. They're spending a Saturday morning and afternoon detention where if these five students had to come up with, a, with their own excuse to actually uh, fix all the problems that they had and why that they were sent there in the first place. So, and these 
these five students are very popular though. You got a jock, you got a nerd, you got a palm queen, you got a rebel, and you got an outcast. And together, you know, they only met once, but it's being run by a very tough principal who's talking down to the students on what to do by writing an essay and about about how they got here whatever you also got a janitor who joins in and just going around cleaning and, and just and you know, just talking to uh, the principal and all that about what's going on everything but it's definitely a wonderful coming of age comedy and drama that's um, tremendously written and directed by John Hughes and he did a very good job. I saw this movie on TV a long time ago and ever since uh, I love the movie. I I could definitely see you know what they've been going through and I can see why you know people talk about this many times especially with the song by Simple Minds, uh, one of the greatest songs ever written, uh, called Don't You Forget About Me. Yeah. Don't you forget about me. Don't, 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 don't you forget about me. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> so let's get to the review. Stars Judd Nelson, Molly Rainbow, Emil Estevez. Anthony Michael Hall, Ali Sheedy, Paul Gleason, no longer with us, of course, but he's been in other stuff, including Die Hard, John Capellos, and Ron Dean. It's written and directed by John Hughes. He's been best known for writing some teen comedies and dramas, you know, throughout the 80s. But he also had worked on other films in the 90s, too. The movie began set on Saturday, March 24th, 1984, at Sherman High School, somewhere in Illinois. We meet five high school students who are all being sentenced to an all-day detention through the mornings to the afternoon. Each come from different stereotypes. One is a popular girl is a senior prom queen named Claire Standish, who's played by Molly Ringwall. Two, we meet a brainy geek named Brian Johnson, who's played by Anthony Michael Hall. Three, a jockish wrestler named Andrew Clark, who's played by Emilio Estevez. Four, a rebel named John Bender, who's played by Judd Nelson. And five, an outcast, who's an eccentric artist named Allison Reynolds, who's played by Ali Sheedy. They all gather around at a huge school library where a tough assistant principal, Richard Burnham, played by Paul Gleason, had instructed them not to talk, leave their seats, or even sleep until they are released at four o'clock. So they assigned them for a thousand word essay in which they had to describe to themselves who you think you are. So he so that way, you know, it'll be done and get it over with. And then they have to explain their problems and their feelings, you know, during their teenage life. And then he leaves just to return only occasionally just to check on the students themselves before they wind up screwing around. John, however, has an distinguished relationship with him by ignoring all the rules and whilst up with the other students including Brian and Andrew yet by teasing them completely and harassing Claire and yes that's when he actually says to Vernon eat my shorts which that became the infamous line that's a Bart Simpson trademark on the Simpsons <laughs> so there you are and he was given eight Saturdays for two months in detention because of his attitude. So, 
and even worse, he even locks himself, and even worse, he even uh, takes him and locks him inside the storage closet and tries to threaten with him by telling him to actually punch him in the face and beat him up, but he couldn't. <laughs> Because even he was afraid. And then we, we found out that he actually escapes by going up on top of the roof before he crashes all the way down into the library and he grabs a pencil. Uh, there's also a scene where, where she actually takes the tool out of the doors, you know, where it actually holds uh, the door from being closed. So they use one of those stands to, to hold the door. Took that out and the door was closed. So that way the principal to actually uh, spy on them to see what they're doing. So he offers um, Andrew to actually bring in um, a magazine stand to actually cover it, but that didn't work out because he tried to use a chair, but still didn't work. So it just leaves the door closed as it is. We also have a janitor who happens to be uh, once a student a graduate student at the same high school and named Carl Weed is played by John Capellos which actually has this um, actual quote from him uh, definitely a fun scene uh, where Bender actually explains to to him about about becoming a janitor <laughs> such as uh, and here's this how does one become a janitor you want to be a janitor no, I just want to know how to become a janitor because Andrew here is very interested in pursuing a career in the custodian arts. Oh, really? You guys think I'm some untouchable peasant? Surf? Peon? Well, maybe so, but I follow a broom around after shitheads like you for the last eight years. I learned a couple things. I look for your letters, I look for your lockers, I listen to your conversations. You don't know that, but I do. I am the eyes and ears of this institution, my friends. By the way, the clock's 20 minutes fast. <laughs> yeah. Very good at that. Um, so, during those hours, um, the students themselves had to talk, argue, and at this point on, smoking some marijuana that John actually found in his locker. He has a two-side locker that he saved, you know, which he added a, a small gullotine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he even wrote the... He even has, like, a, a hanging rope. He even says, you touch this locker, you'll die. And he has, he even says fag on there. So, which... Gradually, yes, uh, Claire, along with um, Brian and John, were smoking marijuana. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Brian was wearing the shades, and <laughs> and he was ready to give uh, John a high five, and then <laughs> he just uh, knocks him with with the shades like that <laughs> and push him like like forward like that. Um, I mean, even the, Andrew started to. Um, smoke as well and, and then he started to go completely high just he has, uh, has all the energy by doing his uh, athletic moves you know there was a dance scene and he even uh, actually even caused uh, the glass door to break in the uh, the foreign studies uh, room <laughs> that was really amazing uh, there's also a scene too where you know they were playing some um, a lot of new wave uh, pop music and just uh, dancing around too uh, throughout the entire um, school library I mean that's very memorable right there and they were cool when they did those uh, dance moves so then that's when they start reviewing the, their secrets behind uh, each other as they explain themselves we learn that Claire has an experience of peer pressure John actually comes from an abusive household, yeah, which you know, he had to deal with his mother and father. You know, they're cursing at each other, cursing at him too. Even gives uh, John a, even gives Bender um, a uh, a cigar mark on his arm, yeah, because you could tell how abusive they really are. 
I mean, I love how he actually uh, reacts to that, too, when he tells them to the students, even though they thought that, that he's lying. Um, we also learned that Allison is a compulsive liar, you know, because she actually does a lot of crazy shit, too. Like, she actually, uh, like, she actually made love with, uh, a shrink, but that never happened. Andrew suddenly can't think to himself, especially when, yeah, he took a poor student, uh, by putting, uh, putting tape on his buck cheeks, you know, just so he could become a winner and awesome. But he knew that this was a bad idea. I mean, because his father, you know, played by Ron Dean, wanted him to succeed. I mean, he wants to become the best um, wrestling championship ever. And that's why he hates him so much. Yeah, because of the way he keeps pressuring him so much. Even Brian was attempting to commit suicide by taking a handgun over a bad grade that he was receiving. Yeah, because he, you know, he's been uh, going for a lot of classes that he took. You know, he's definitely smart and a genius, but but he knows that, you know, he's feeling bad for himself because he's afraid that his parents are going to start punishing him, giving him a hard time, and so that's why he wanted to commit suicide for that. And we also learned that his handgun turned out to be a flare gun. So, I know, it was kind of funny, but, <laughs> yeah. <sighs> also, we learned that Allison um, is completely ignored by her parents, so they never pay attention to her, so she wants to have all the attention she needs. So, it seems like that's exactly what they're going through. Uh, for those five students alone. They're just having a lot of pressure coming from the parents as opposed to school. But as as it goes along, um, Claire suddenly gives Allison a makeover which becomes a romantic interest with Andrew. And Claire decided to break her pristine uh, virginal appearance by kissing Bender as he giving him a hickey, um, and even the, um, even Brian decided to write the entire essay to explain about their problems and everything that happens while in detention, and that's exactly what we saw until the end of the film. Just as the credits rolled by, you know, we see Bender going up to the football field during sunset and gives that particular pose <laughs> right there and yes um, you know I just previously reviewed the film uh, Bumblebee which yes they did uh, show a scene where Bumblebee is watching The Breakfast Club all the way through <laughs> as he copies that pose uh, okay I know and I, I, I love that movie too but nevertheless but The Breakfast Club is definitely um, the finest uh, 80's comedy that we ever got and yes it's a drama too because it also deals with their problems. If, if you get into bigger trouble and you want to get her inside this one particular school library for detention you tend to explain all your problems she had before things have changed for the better. The only problem is is that What's it going to be like um, when Monday comes? Exactly. Uh, tremendous writing by John Hughes himself and incredible direction. I, I really love the, the setting of the film, the way high school really looks. Um, it has a lot of funny moments all the way, quite memorable. Um, love the characters, you know, they're definitely a colorful in their own way. Um, 
I even love the scenes, you know, where when they were having lunch, you know, we noticed that uh, Andrew had a huge lunch. He had several sandwiches with potato chips, <laughs> uh, a gallon of milk, uh, a carton of milk, apples, bananas, and, and chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, Claire has uh, sushi. <laughs> Brian just has like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, apple juice, and soup. Uh, Allison just has, uh, this is really funny, I mean she actually takes out a, um, I think a bologna sandwich, but she actually puts in one of those, uh, one of those pixie stick, uh, I think it might be uh, either cocaine or it might be just candy but it might be just cocaine I don't know I mean it's one of those pixie sticks that she uses and, and pours all the way around um, the sandwich and she even mixes in with uh, those Captain Crunch cereals and she just has a big crunch with that sandwich I mean that's really something too and she also puts on those uh, black eyelanders that she has I mean just before she had that makeover. Uh, all the funny moments too, I mean, even coming from Bender himself, just, you know, trying to uh, do his reactments uh, about his parents and then does all this crazy shit and the way his attitude really, he has a tough attitude too. I mean, it goes around knocking fiends over and all that. I mean, you know, Andrew, of course, usual. <laughs> I mean, he even gets to wrestle uh, with um, Bender in that one scene. But we know that even Bender could actually kill him by using a knife. Uh, the ruckus scene, of course, when when he was trying to go back to the uh, the library, trying to escape from the storage room, well, uh, Bernan just went to the restroom, and the students had to describe uh, the ruckus, so they had to make make their actual noises to see if it matches. <laughs> yeah, even though uh, Bender had to hide under the desk, and uh, yeah which reveals an upskirt scene from Claire. <laughs> that was just hilarious. And this movie really defines the 80s uh, quite well. I mean, it was a popular culture. You know, the way people dress, you know, the way we had pop music and all this other new wave stuff and and all the, the fan all the merchandising and all this other stuff we got I mean this is just amazing that now we know why we really missed that era but I was only born the same year that this film came out which I wish I had experienced it more you know during the early times but again I mean this came out before I was born just a few months later but I still but I could definitely see why this was such a classic. I mean, especially during the Brad Pack era of young popular stars, you know, for its time. And it really held an impact on them, too. I mean, think with all the films, uh, e even, a, even movies that weren't produced, written, and directed by John Hughes, you know, such as St. Elmo's Fire, uh, as well as. Um, a few others that follow. Um, it still was uh, very popular to be remembered by, you know, by teenagers alike. In fact, that you know, we begin to find out, you know, what these stars have been doing, you know, even if they weren't in movies, you know, they they wound up, you know, doing their um, social lives and all that. So, but it's basically what the film is, you know, five students. Uh, in detention, all talk until you know they do a lot of bizarre things and all that. That's essentially what this film's about. 
and they solve their problems in the end until until they find out what happens when Monday comes. But it does have a wonderful soundtrack, uh, all new wave pop. Definitely a pure classic from John Hughes, and and you can definitely see why he's one of the greatest writers who ever lived. And I'm just sad he's no longer with us, but he always will be remembered. And and I also love that quote that came from a David Bowie song that was at the beginning. Um, it was actually from the song Changes, so it really shows uh, the quote on what the film is about. Which we did learn that it was actually taken directly from the Allison character. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, anyway, that's um, The Breakfast Club. And I give this particular pose five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.